My name is Anthony. Most people know me as AT. And AT was an, is an acronym. How are we doing, Mitro? Okay? Thank you. Mo most people know me as AT because it was my badge or an acronym on the trading floor. Most people refer to their counterparties as that acronym. That acronym is a structure that represents who your counterparty is, who you trade with. And I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about uh, natural language processing, how my, my journey got me here. So I'm essentially an options trader that traded fixed income and equities and commodities uh, globally. And when you trade options globally, you have to deal with, um, there's a lot of equity or electronic transactions as well as OTC. So I had to deal with turrets and voice and instant message data and uh, the frustrations of wanting my electronic world to be as efficient as the OTC unstructured world. Hopefully that gives you some context into, you know, hey, why did this guy uh, found an NLP company? So we're going to talk about uh, natural language processing. Uh, I wanted to talk about building awesome culture, but Mozzie said, nah, talk about NLP. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about what is it and why should you care? Essentially, there's a lot of unstructured data. It's sort of just super messy world we live in. Lots of human conversations and interactions. The, the technical definition of natural language processing is, the, is uh, machine interfacing with man. It's a subfield of AI and linguistics. If you're, if you're talking to mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, NLP allows you to structure or extract stuff from human conversation. That's what you do. So what, what's the problem? The problem is that all this unstructured data is exploding. Just today, there's 500 million tweets. It's kind of hard to wrap your mind around all this data, but there's 500 million tweets, roughly 300 billion emails today, 65 billion messages in WhatsApp, 5 billion searches. Somebody here is from Bloomberg. I, I'm a Bloomberg user. 200 million emails were sent in Bloomberg today, 20 million instant messages. It's just a lot of data. Banks and sales and trading desks in particular are just overwhelmed with the amount of unstructured data hitting the desks. So there's an explosion. You need a machine. Something needs to happen. Something needs to structure this data up and do something with it. That something is either insights or automation. That's really what it comes down to. Insights is making the data valuable, work for you, learn something about your customer, and automation is about a tedious task that you want to eliminate. So you're going to use NLP for one of those two things. Let's sort of level set real quick. Um, there's tons of buzzwords like AI and machine learning and deep learning and NLP, and there's a lot of overlap between these things. The thing you have to understand is that um, some people just do ML without any NLP. So if you're just building trading algorithms all day or working with genetic algorithms, and you don't have human conversation, you don't really need to know about NLP. But if you're in your world, if you have emails and instant message and audio files that you need to analyze, you need to have NLP structure that data first before your machine learning algorithms um, do something with it. So if you want to build a chatbot or a digital assistant, you're going to have to use NLP first. Uh, and then your NML takes over from there. So just level set. This is the worst slide of the night, I promise. Um, NLP uh, is kind of a big topic, and there's, there, you know, I want to use this slide to tell you where we're at in the industry. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors, and I hear a lot about you know, different companies or industries uh, being at uh, various levels. But let's go all the way back. Um, speech recognition, they call it ASR. This is uh, transcribing your audio files to unstructured text. We were doing this 30 years ago. That's not new, it's not exciting, it's not NLP. Convert audio file to text. Um, as you move into NLP, some of the stuff like uh, text categorization or especially syntax parsing, we were doing that in 2004. This is where you have a very specific quote structure in an instant message stream and you can't have a forward slash if you need a back space or you can't have a space missing, it's got to be perfect. That's syntax parsing. Uh, you might remember ICE Web, ICE bought 
uh, Yellow Jacket in 2004. CME bought Pivot. They bought these instant message technologies that were um, parsing. Green Key is in the semantic parsing category. And everybody's trying to move towards the dialogue agents, which are sort of chat bots where you can't tell if it's a human or a bot. We're not there yet. We're somewhere here. There's various buy side firms that do some interesting stuff around sentiment analysis. I'll talk a little bit about that. That's where we are. That's the difference between NLP and NLU. There's a really small field called natural language generation, which is the ability to summarize something and then deliver a report. It's very, very hard to do. Okay, so why, why don't you have NLP in your lives today? Like at work, why aren't you leveraging it or using it? You probably have it in your phone. Uh, spam filters leverage NLP. If you're on Gmail, they structure all those conversations, put it in folders for you. If it's social or something else. Uh, maybe you're texting, like autocomplete is NLP. Uh, so you're probably using it in your personal life because that's general English. You're not using it at work because it's very difficult to do because you work with a lot of complex jargon. And this is what Green Key does. We're domain-specific complex jargon NLP. I'll talk a little bit about that. The problem in financial markets is you don't speak English. There's 35 different languages we call languages like investment grade or high yield or credit or rates or crude oil. The problem is you can't take a crude oil trader and drop him onto a credit desk. He doesn't understand the language. So these are really domain specific uh, tribal languages that are being spoken. This is why you don't see Amazon and Google in this space. It's super small, it's niche, and you need uh, to understand complex jargon. This, the way that you build NLP for complex jargon is you need a studio. You need error corrections and feedback. I would be super skeptical of anybody trying to sell you a black box in the NLP space. You need error corrections, user feedback, you want to have your subject matter experts click and change something when it's incorrect. The machine needs to learn. Uh, that's why I'm sort of skeptical of like the people that are doing or saying they do unsupervised NLP. It's extremely difficult, especially when you've got complex jargon. Make sure if you're talking to somebody providing NLP, you ask lots of questions around error corrections and the, um, the mechanism to give feedback into the model. Okay. So we, we're on the same page. Everybody here is now an expert in what is unstructured data, what is an NLP engine. Uh, let's get to the point. So you're going to use an NLP engine. What do you get? What's in it for you? What are the things that are actually happening on Wall Street? No bullshit. What are the actual use cases, low-lying fruit, that you can leverage NLP for for today? We're going to talk about insights, and then we're going to go into automation. I'm not sure if you can see this, but this, this is like the most basic uh, use case we come across, which is, hey, uh, I've got all this data, like Bloomberg files, audio, emails. Can you structure it up and tell me what my customers have asked for? Because a lot of banks know what traded. They don't know what they asked for. This is a lot like um, what's in your customer's cart. So Amazon knows what's in your cart. You might not have bought it yet, but they know it's in there. This gives you the ability to understand who's asked you for what over the past six months. So when somebody asks you for Coca-Cola, you don't have Coca-Cola, you, you know, uh, well, I can sell you some Pepsi, and I know where I can go get that from. So it allows you to map your counterparties quickly by understanding who's asked you for what over time. OK, moving on, getting a little bit more complex. We see this use case a lot. This is. Look at my sales desk conversations and classify them by social or price updates, uh, market color, or transactional. Here's why this is super important. A, everybody's trying to figure out how, why don't more quotes turn into trades? That's what everybody's trying to figure out on these desks. The reason quotes don't turn into trades is because you don't have the relationship. 
What's happened in the banks is the price is the same everywhere. What I mean by that is the buy side is spamming the sell side because they have best X and all these other regulations are trying to prove they get the best execution. So they're spamming the sell side so all the price is the same. I get a seven bid from everybody. And then I make a choice who I trade with. And I trade with a counterparty that gives me convenience and the best quality of service and I have the best relationship. So if you're looking at your sales team trying to understand how do we convert more quotes to trades, you need to understand how do you deliver more market color and more social? How do you increase the relationships with your counterparties? So we're spending a lot of time here. This is a really key thing to do is to start classifying conversations, to start understanding where do you truly have good relationships? We go into a lot of different banks where we'll see a sales guy that spends a lot of time trying to land BlackRock, for example, and he spends 90% of his human time, but there's very little deals that result from that. Uh, so you can't improve what you don't measure. So classifying conversations, super important. This is a lot of information. Let me sort of break this down. In the first use case, we talked about structuring products being mentioned. Then we said you can classify conversations. Ultimately, what people are trying to do is to build efficiency scores, to understand like where is my communication most efficient? So you can look at how many minutes of audio you spent, how many minutes of chat you spent, how did the sales desk allocate their time, and what were the net deals? You can monitor the relationship, so you, if an out trade or a break happens, or something, some negative event happens, you can watch the quality of that relationship deteriorate quickly, you can try to fix it. On the trading side, we'd call that putting you in the box. If somebody broke a trade or there's some issue or problem, that guy goes in the box for a while as a sort of a punishment. You want to understand when there's issues and problems. You also, don't, you also want something objective to talk to your sales team about and for your sales team to understand where they need to improve relationships at. The big picture here is chatbots. That's really what is going to happen, is you're gonna use this data to understand what relationships you're gonna stand a chatbot up to. A lot of your relationships, I would say the majority of them are probably a lot of price updates. And chatbots, we're gonna talk about it a little bit, they're really baby market makers. They're gonna automate a lot of the price back and forth that is noise, and that can be automated away, so the humans can spend time doing market color and research uh, and building relationships. But you have to start here and say, which counterparties can we stand up a chatbot to without losing revenue, and have the humans focus on our relationships? Okay, so we talked about three different use cases or insights that can be created with NLP. I'm gonna switch over to automation now. Again, these are tedious tasks that we see NLP being used for. So the first one is um, taking your phone call. You have a phone call with a person and we can convert that from an audio file or you can put a call bot on the phone we have a, there's probably a video or something like that back in the booth um, where Chris Catrino could show you. We can take that data and put it into tier one. Grinkey also, besides being in financial markets, we're in public safety. And we, I work a lot with like police departments. Uh, they don't like putting information into the CRM. They don't like filling out reports. It's, it takes a lot of time and hours. And so we, we spend a lot of effort automating that process. Uh, you can call in to your CRM while you're driving. That's the best way to do CRM notes. It, we actually have seen salespeople enter more notes, like three times more notes, when they can enter it by phone. You just dial in when you're driving uh, and populate a CRM. This voice populate forms we're kind of known for. We have a lot of customers that do this. This is populating trade tickets, complex forms, things that you just don't want to type because voice is faster to do it. I mentioned a little bit about bots earlier, and uh, you know this is not hype, guys. Like bots are for real, and you're going to look back at the industry at this time and say, "Oh, that was the birth of bots." And NLP is the operating layer 
powering bots. You might have heard or seen or read about um, like JP Morgan's Betsy or Alliance Bernstein's Abby, NetWest announced Scout, Symphony just announced Spark, uh, which will become their bot. People use the word bots for different things. Typically, they're talking about a digital assistant um, or a pricing engine. I think Kim showed uh, putting Bloomberg data into a pricing mechanism. We see that a lot. But they're really, they're baby market makers is what's being built. They're the things that are going to communicate, commoditize flow back and forth. And the humans are going to focus on relationship building. So I won't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the last four because they're, um, they're buy side use cases. And I, my understanding is this is mainly uh, sell side and sales and trading. Uh, but we, on the buy side, one of the more interesting use cases is word complexity models. This is like taking Elon Musk and transcribing him and understanding his word complexity of how he speaks from one earnings call to the next and what's his level of evasiveness. There's a company called Amenity Analytics that's one of our partners uh, where they've got a lot of hedge funds that use NLP to build word complexity models. Same thing with SEC filings and then uh, Best execution is about using NLP to structure up your instant message data to prove that you've went out and got the best price. And this is a, this is a new one that's kind of interesting. Uh, we have a couple of buy side firms that are mapping the research that you guys provide to them to the actual trades they did uh, so they can rank and sort through uh, where they get the best uh, advice. So I, I just want to leave you with, uh, you know, nat natural language processing is not nice to have, guys. It's like electricity. You have to have it. If you don't have it, you're going to be in the dark. It's going to power all forms of automation over the next five years. So I'd encourage you to, whoever your NLP provider is, hopefully this, you've learned something tonight. Uh, and uh, this wave of automation is coming and NLP is powering it. Thank you very much.